Hello everyone, William here. I just had another great conversation with another guest. Would you like to come in and listen in on the conversation we had? By the way, feel free to share it with anyone you feel may find it of interest. Come on, let's go listen in now. Bob Isidorian, you're back again. As always, you're thank you. You're thank becoming you. a regular. I'm a, you might be my permanent sidekick after all this. Well, thank you, and thank you to the viewers. Big thanks yeah. to the viewers for allowing us in their homes. Yeah, very good. Well, you sent me an email on a topic that you wanted to talk about that was very current, uh, especially today. So uh, we're here to uh, talk trash. Literally, literally. If the viewers, well, I hope many of you have been tuning in this week to the media. The Hamilton Spectator just broke a huge story undercover sting so to speak on Hamilton garbage collection so we're here to talk trash and Bob's gonna be venting and venting quite a lot today Bill I'm very passionate on this topic because it goes to the core the root of who I am as a business first of all before I get into the crazy rant I want to state some facts so everybody can understand me clearly number one Nobody feels more for these garbage collectors working in the excruciating heat and in the cold of the winter, especially this winter, than I do. I can relate. As a contractor for a decade and a tradesman employee for 15 years preceding that, I've worked in the horrible heat and I've worked in the cold. So I understand that. So right off the bat, I commend the workers. I commend them. At least at my home and from all the other homes, what I'm seeing in the media, no issue about is the trash being collected and picked up efficiently done great job i applaud you so i haven't had a chance to read anything on this so what exactly is? oh wow wow uh, essentially the hamilton spectator did an undercover sort of a sting operation investigation it's been going on for a while they they've done what i believe is an exemplary job in the media of breaking the story now literally it's become political so what they've done is they follow these garbage collectors from the moment they or from prior to them even punching in so they have their own personal vehicle you know they drive over to the city yard or wherever it is they park they get out they go in they punch in so they've been timed and followed by video surveillance and photographs from that moment and then they're followed through their shift till when their day is done so what the spectator is exposed and they have footage they have serial numbers of these city vehicles the garbage vehicles they have all the information what they've exposed is on the average alarmingly so on the average these city employees work anywhere between four to five hours sometimes less so we're taking the norm here four to five hours work for eight hours pay including paid lunches and breaks now, again, I'm a contractor in the private industry. We could do another show on that, but I don't pay my employees and nobody's ever paid me for lunches. I work eight and a half hours to get paid for eight. I don't get paid for a lunch, but that's another topic. But I, I mean, just to show you how good they have it. Now, as I said in the beginning, I feel for them. They collect the trash in the cold, in the heat. Has there been an issue this terrible winter that we've had? No, no issues with garbage pickup. That's all fine and dandy. So let's get that on the table immediately. The issue is eight hours pay for five hours work. This is insanity. Now, let's break into some of the coverage that's been in the spectator this week. City council, including our mayor, Everybody split on what their thoughts are. Loosely, well, the mayor, I can say clearly, the mayor seems to be pro these employees because there's a lot of ways to look at it. Now, they can work at a snail's pace or they can walk to do their work or they can run. Okay, fine. They're running. They're doing it fast. All the garbage is picked up. There's no issues, Bill. Garbage hasn't been left in front of homes. So they can choose to work slow <coughs> and get an eight-hour day done, literally working eight hours, or they can work fast. So fine. They work fast done uh, duties are done garbage is picked up now they're getting paid for eight hours and they've only worked for f for uh, for five so as far as the mayor he's on their side that that's fine that's in order although as far as the media coverage is this week it seems to be the big point being put the city hall is is it right to pay eight hours for five hours work city's not answering that directly you know politics they're basically saying at least on the side of the mayor they're saying that everything's clean no complaints jobs being done it's being done affordably you know as far as compared to offloading it to the private sector now as far as the councillors, city councillors, again it seems to be split as far as what I've read in the media this week there are some councillors that say it's fine 
Look at the harsh conditions, the heat, the cold of the winter. Is the garbage getting picked up? Yes. Is the job being done efficiently and affordably? Yes. So leave these guys alone. I mean, they could choose to work super slow to drag out the eight hours, and they're not. Leave them alone. Then you have the other half of city council, the other councillors. They're upset with this, rightly so. They want heads to roll at the top upper levels of management. Because again, really, it's management that it comes down to. Can you imagine you guys being hired as garbage collectors? They see the flow. They see, you know, you work slower, you work fast, idle your truck here, idle there. You know, if we're done in five hours, you get paid for eight. That's the culture. So these new employees are going to go with the flow. They're not going to stand out and risk their job. So heads need to roll at the upper management level. So again, we've got council that's torn, that's mixed. I'm a candidate, proudly so for Ward 3, and most importantly, I am an employer. I run a small business, and I run it successfully. If my small business were to have property tax increases like we do at the city, that would put me out of business, if I could sort of equate that to you. So now, my thought process on what's going on. Bill, this is wrong. It makes no sense to me, and it is at the core of the problem at why I think the biggest issue with all Hamiltonians and all the wards, nobody wants their property taxes to go up. We have senior citizens on a fixed income. We have people losing their jobs. We have people working three jobs to keep up. Why do property taxes go up? Well, they go up because there's not enough money in the coffers to run the city. So now, my perspective is a small business, is a small business with employees. First of all, the first two years being in business, I didn't have any employees. I had no money bill. I worked day and night to run my business. Eventually, I was able to hire employees. I'm not stupid. At that point, I become upper management. I know how long it takes to frame a wall. I know how long it takes to put up drywall. Nobody's going to pull the wool over Bob's eyes. So when I hire my employees, I know what's going on. So obviously, I hire enough employees that I need. If I have too many employees and not enough work, I lay people off. If there's not enough to do on one job, I put them on another job. So what I'm trying to say is, I run my company like a well-oiled machine. Uh, there are efficiencies. I believe the municipality should be run in the same manner. And I'll make certain of this, especially for my ward or for any voting I have to do for the purpose of general votes for the entire municipality. Now, in the city situation of, okay, they explain now that, for example, they're working fast. They're running. They're not walking. All garbage is picked up. Everything's nice. They've only worked four or five hours. They're allowed to clock in and get paid for eight. Wrong. I don't agree with that. We have potholes and roads that have been devastated this winter. Everybody watching right now, you've driven over a pothole. You realize eventually what damage that causes to your suspension. And good luck trying to get reimbursement from the city. So what I'm trying to say is you look in the media or you drive up and down any of our streets. I don't believe as a taxpayer that the potholes are being fixed efficiently enough. So right now, if we've got garbage collecting guys that, see the first mistake I believe, the first mistake of these employees is, they've now opened our eyes that if they want to hustle and work fast, they can do what should be an eight hour job in five. Well guess what now? There's three hours left over. Absolutely not. You don't get to go home. You don't get to sit and idle your truck and get paid for those hours. Go fill the potholes in the roads. I mean, am I not making sense here? I'm a rational, sensible business owner. And that, those practices, those principles are what I'm going to bring to Ward 3. If these employees have now shown that they can hustle and work fast, well, you're not getting a free ride. You're not getting paid three, four hours extra for free. Either you're going to be found and placed on other city work, or if we've got 11 of you, we're going to lay three of you off. And we're going to save money in the city because you don't need 11, 12 people to do the work of seven or eight. That's been proven. However, let's not lay them off. Let's do the humane thing. Let's take the first four weeks of these three, four extra hours that they have, do health and safety training, train them on what pothole repairs are all about, teach them, and any time they've hustled and gotten the eight-hour job done in five, get out there and fill the potholes. What's wrong with that? Nobody gets a free ride. This is a culture of entitlement. Again, anybody out there watching this now that's ever had to put together a small business or ever had to work in the private sector, you know work is work. Ask my employees. If my employees show me or I know a job should take three to four hours, they better have that job done and move on to the next one. 
Sometimes my employees, and they're honest, they're always honest, my guys. Sometimes it happens that they're done at 2 or 3 o'clock. You know, there's not enough work for them to do at 5. I'm proud of them. They clock out. They advise me what their hours are. They go home. I don't pay them bill till 5 o'clock. I can't afford to do that. That would cost me. That would put me in the red. That would put me negative. And I respect the fact that they've been honest. The job got done at 1 or 2. They're not getting paid till 5. They go home. When there's other work, they'll, they'll be able to work till, till, uh, till 5 o'clock. Now, these city employees, they've already shown that they can do an 8-hour work job, which should be an 8-hour day. They can do it in 5. So now you can't go the other way around. It's too late now. They can't now say, okay, okay, we'll keep it till 8. That would mean they would drag their feet because there's been this consensus now that if they want, and the mayor was saying this, I believe, or one of the counselors were in the spectator this week, that leave them alone. They could work at a snail's pace and drag it out eight hours, or they can hustle and run because the job is being efficiently done. So if they're finishing in five hours, basically what these counselors and the mayor are saying is let them get their pay till eight. No. That's a free ride on the taxpayer's back. Again, I must reiterate, we've got seniors on a fixed income paying property taxes. We've got people, households working multiple jobs, husband and wives are working several jobs to meet their tax burden. Why do property taxes go up? It's because there's not enough money in the coffers. Look at these inefficiencies. Bill, I'm going to turn the tables on you here for a moment. And again, I mean, don't agree with me if you don't want to agree with me. But as a taxpayer, property taxpayer that you are, and I'm very certain you put your trash out each week, now that you know what the spectators uncovered, and let's assume for a moment, I mean, I know the city's got to do a rebuttal and yada, yada, but I mean, let's play the devil's advocate. For, 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 for I mean, just for the show, for, for, the, for the sake of um, argument's sake, let's assume that this investigation's correct. I mean, if it's not correct and it's flawed, the spectator will do retract it. So for argument's sake, let's assume that it's correct, that they are hustling. They're getting work done in five hours. It should take eight. It's efficient. It's good work. They're doing it cheaper than it would take for the private sector, meaning if we stop the city collecting and putting it out. So let's assume the facts are correct and they're allowed to get paid for eight for doing four to five hours work. Remember, it's your tax dollars. You're paying them. So everybody has to understand. What do you think of this mess? Well, um... I don't know too many people who would be able to undergo that kind of scrutiny without being, uh, without something being found uh, about how they could be more efficient at their job, number one. Uh, but secondly, when you were talking, the first thing that came to my mind was uh, when I take my car to a mechanic, the Chilton book says it'll take two and a half hours and they're done in an hour, but they still get paid the two and a half hours. Correct. And I understand that we're talking about tax dollars and whatnot. And fortunately for me, I'm not a politician, so I don't have to have a place to stand on this. True, true. But... Um, I, I think I'd have to give that some uh, deep thought for sure. I, uh, you know, having it dropped on me right now, but that was the first thought that came to me was, you know, we we pay people per project, and mm -hmm. as a contractor, I'm sure when you go in and you base your uh, renovation on a project and you have to give an estimate, you don't know how many hours it's going to take, and if you finish up early or not as long as it takes, do we give the consumer a break? Maybe some do, maybe some don't. But if the quote is done, and this one worked out better for you, um, then uh, we we are. This is a win because there's going to be another one down the road that's not going to be a win. So I, I don't know how long this study was or what period of time it was, but weather conditions, all those kind of things, will certainly play a part. Correct. In in garbage uh, collection. So if the study and studies are sometimes flawed in that respect. So if the study was long enough and broad enough, which I would say it would have to be over a year. Okay. Uh, so you get all the seasons in that you'd be able to say, okay, well, maybe during this part of the season it was five hours, but during this other part of the season, because traffic is more, they're actually working longer. It's quite possible. I don't know what the study was. So that's where my thinking went on it when you were They'll answer like a true politician. <laughs> <laughs> and I, you know what? I, res I respect <laughs> you for it. Mm -hmm. I mean, what I'm trying to put out, obviously I'm a candidate for Ward 3. There's political stances, there's honest stances. What I want the residents to know, the constituents, the voters, I'm passionate on this because again, coming from the private sector, having spent 15 years of my life in this business, getting paid by the hour, I understand how dollars and cents matter and efficiencies matter. And this burns me, this bothers me. I mean, Bill, I've done cable 14 shows. I'll give, I'll give you an example on this because I don't sugarcoat it. I mean, there may be voters out there that will be upset with me with what I'm saying now. And there'll be other voters who will be pleased with me with my stance on this. 
either way I am real these are my beliefs these are the beliefs that I will take to council some time ago it was last summer we were doing tapings for my half hour home improvement rental show the just ask Bob show and at that time there was a big again undercover investigation through the spectator against the city of Hamilton it was about stolen asphalt very different investigation stolen asphalt and um, you know slacking hours and whatnot different type of thing so at that time we had one of my job sites real job sites we were digging a hole we had a pit excavated and we're there working and during one of the takes of the show my foreman he was sort of leaning or beside a shovel while I was explaining what's going on in the job and again it came to me real life experience what I'm involved in what I've done in my real life I chose at that moment integrated into the program now again I'm not making this up and this is in the minds of the voters I don't know how many of you voters have ever dropped, dropped, uh, driven by the roads when you see construction going on. And again, I'll throw this out there, and if it resonates in your mind, you tell me in October through, the, through your vote. How many times have you seen a hole being dug or something going on, and you see five or six city employees, one shoveling like an animal, the other four or five are sitting there smoking in a circle watching them? Okay, I'll leave that up to you. I'm sure many of you have seen it, many of you haven't, but we'll see how that resonates with you. So on the Cable 14 show, the hole was there, I was in the pit, I was explaining stuff. My foreman, Ryan Belloff, I can give a shout out to him, he was in the background, there was a shovel, there was a pile of dirt. So because the spectator broke that story at that time, I had to make the valid point of, my employees, they're working beside the owner. There's no farting around, there's no hiding hours, there's no... There's no playing games because the man they're working beside is the man that signs their checks. I equate that to a loss of income for me if they're screwing around or productivity. So I had to take that opportunity and just make a gag out of it. And it was right on Cable 14. It's on the weekly show where I turned around the Ryan for a moment and I yelled at him. I said, hey, what do you think this is? A city job. Stop leaning on that shovel. Start emptying that dirt into the hole. So I made fun of it. But my point is I have a background in this. 25 years experience never with city work I wasn't that lucky with the benefits and matching the RSPs and whatever else those high-paying jobs give you I worked next to the owner whether it was the bricklayers the framers or the roofers I can come in one day with a new haircut and if my boss didn't like my haircut there's no rights for me Bob you're fired no union no rights no backups I know what it means to work like a bastard in the heat for 10 hours or to work in the cold when it's 43 degrees below zero in the wind. I know what it takes to do that. So nobody respects these city employees more than I do for the tolerance to the heat and the cold. However, they're working quick, which means they can get the job literally done efficiently. Nobody called in the complaint garbage wasn't picked up. So those are facts that are not, be facts that are not being disputed. That work can get done in five hours but they're getting paid for eight I'm sorry those other three hours go fill the potholes on the roads those are my opinions those are my thoughts that's the type of person I'm gonna be that's the type of candidate you're gonna have always being passionate about his or her concerns well it'll be quite interesting to see uh, the uh, perspective uh, yes. the other candidates have in the city uh, well they're torn unfolds? on it Bill it's been Is all it over the papers mm -hmm. half the candidates seem to support the city and the fact that hey garbage wasn't left behind it was done efficiently at a good price so be it you know let them get paid for those three hours mm -hmm. a day a day a day others are upset about it and from what I'm gathering from comment pages and posts the community at large not just Ward 3 what matters is the voters mm -hmm. I fully understand that I'm absorbing this that the community the taxpayers all Hamiltonians are outraged because this is a waste of money. We'll see how it pans out, Bill. It'll yeah. be very interesting. Sure. But I had to take this opportunity to share my thoughts based not only as an employer, but most importantly, I've been an employee paid by the hour doing these jobs for much, much longer than I've been a contractor. But Bill, if I can just take a moment, my mind's sort of racing back to, actually, gosh, if any of us gave the most political answer today, it was you, my friend, so you did a good <laughs> job. But I have to jump in on one moment to chime in on that. Um, you brought up a very, very, very valid point about contractors such as myself or any contractor. A lot of times, I mean, we cannot know by the hour how long a job takes. So we put in a quote, we may think, not really hours, but based on days, how long a job will take and again if we finish it two and a half days sooner than we thought well are we giving the homeowner a break are we saying sir ma'am here's some money back because we did the job faster 
Not quite, but I, I need to explain on that. As a contractor, I've been across the board, interviews, print, radio, newspaper, whatnot. I've been interviewed on. A big question has been pricing. How do you pay your contractor? This ties in now directly with what's going on at the city. I've always said that the lowest of contractors or the unlicensed or the crooks, those are the renovators or handymen or people that will bill a homeowner by the hour. Please, as homeowners, do not hire contractors and pay them by the hour. The simple reason is you almost become, in the eyes of the law, their boss now. So when, do you, when does this contractor start billing you by the hour? By the time he rolls over and hits snooze on his alarm clock? What if a drill bit breaks or something goes wrong? He's got to run out to the big box store or go get more material or just doesn't work efficiently. You're a homeowner. You should be at work earning money to pay him while he's at work in your home, but if you're paying them by the hour, shouldn't you be there watching them all day? It's a can of worms. Mm -hmm. True professionals, true licensed contractors, as I've showed you my car, City Hamilton Master Building Pair License, none of the real guys charge by the hour. We're contractors, so we charge a contract. Homeowners ask me all the time, Bob, how do you bill? What happens? What's going on? I explain to them, I come to your home, it's a free no obligation quote, I absorb, I find out what the job will be, I quote you a contract price, which includes all materials and labor. So for example, now if I'm installing a toilet for you, it's that contract price. I supply everything that was a proper contractor. I over tighten the right bolt as opposed to the left bolt to mount that toilet to the floor. I crack the china. Well, if you're paying me by the hour, I guess you're going to keep paying. As a contract price, it's all included. That's my loss now. I've got to go run out and you know buy another toilet, return the one I broke, or do whatever. That's on me. Contract price means the homeowner's protected. Now, when we go back to the Chilton standard, standardized book, what's interesting about that is it is basically almost a contract price. Mm -hmm. If the mechanic takes much longer, he's not paid any extra. Right. If the mechanic takes less, he's not, paid any, uh, he's not returning a refund to the owner of the automobile. So as a contractor charging a contract price, if I hustle, you know, I choose that day to run instead of walk in my manner of working, I've earned extra for myself, that's that. You, the homeowner, though, are not given a refund back. If I break things or things go wrong or there's material delays or for whatever reason the job goes over, takes me, we're not even talking hours, takes days longer than I thought, I don't charge you more. That's notwithstanding tear, tearing down plaster walls and finding a body in there. I mean, there's always unforeseen. But this situation with the municipality, garbage pickup, the viewers must understand these are hourly paid city employees paid by you, the taxpayer. If the city got rid of collecting garbage internally and they subcontracted this or they outsourced it to privatization, then it's a contract price. There's a contract price to pick up X amount of garbage all year round, regardless of traffic, regardless of congestion, regardless of weather. Then that private service says to the city, this is how much we'll charge you annually to pick up the garbage. Now, they can run, play, sleep, dance, or snooze during their job. It doesn't matter. That's almost then equating it to the Chilton's auto mechanic book mm -hmm. or to us contractors. However, that is not apples to apples. So sorry for that analogy, Bill. It was an orange to an apple, but a good analogy. I didn't tear on you there. But residents and the constituents have to understand these are employees, not subcontractors or outsourced people. They work for the city of Hamilton. They get paid per hour. So we expect productivity in return. If they drag their feet forever and prove that it takes eight hours every day to pick up the trash, there wouldn't be an issue because nobody said it's not being picked up. However, the issue now becomes when they show us what great workers they are. They're too efficient. They're getting an eight-hour job done in five hours. Or you know what? Bravo. Good for you. You're getting paid good money, good benefits, good privileges. Good for you. You're not slowing down now. Those other three hours, you're getting paid for them. Get to work. Fill the potholes. Fix the roads. We'll sum it up on that. Yeah. Point well taken. It'll be interesting once again to see how it unfolds. Definitely. Thanks for the, thanks for the call again, Bobby. And once again, I invite anybody uh, who wanted to have a conversation on that topic or any other topic uh, to give me a shout and uh, reach out to contagiousconversation.ca and uh, we can set up a time to have another conversation as well. Always. I look forward to it, Bobby. Can I give a shout out with my website? Absolutely. To all the viewers, I'm a very easy guy to get a hold of. Please visit our website, triple W. For a better ward3.com. Again, that's triple W for a better ward3.com. 
visit our website it'll link you to our YouTube channel where you can watch this interview and many more visit us on social media everywhere from Facebook LinkedIn to Twitter follow us or do it the old-fashioned way I am old school after all pick up the telephone 905-929-8511 again that's 905-929-8511 I will be known as the most accessible counselor thank you Thanks, Bobby. Thank you again. Enjoy the rest of your day. Had a great time. Bye for now. Join us. Catch the bug.